Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler, it's aka Ty Killington. Yeah, man. All right. So this video is a little bit different. I'm actually doing this live. If I mess up, just bear with me. But this is a really cool video. I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's um, basically, it's the top 25 settings that you should have for GTA 5 online. I'm going to go through my settings and options and show you how I play. Now, of course, this is going to differ for you know a lot of people but overall this is going to be what I recommend that you use that you have your game set up with and maybe you'll learn a few things I'm sure a lot of you guys will know already you know what a lot of this stuff is but I, I guarantee you there are some folks that, that are, there's a few of these things they just don't know what they do and what they are so I'm gonna try to help out so I'm gonna do my best anyways okay man let's get into it so <laughs> let's check this out <laughs> so hit your options button on whatever console you use and we will start with the online part first okay um, nothing really with maps now listen look at my map you see how minimal this is first of all I'm in a I'm in a solo public lobby there's nobody in here but a lot of your guys' maps I know have like tons of crap all over it and that makes it really hard to see what's going on uh, I have videos that I can link in the description that tell you how to do this and, and and make it as minimal as possible so you know what the hell you're looking at when you're going through the map over here all right so anyways well, well i'll show you guys that video later i'll link there i'll make a new video whatever all right so here we go let's go online let's go all the way down all the way down to options okay and you can do a lot of stuff with your game right here and figure this out and we'll kind of talk about it right so first of all you have enable passive mode you can do that through the interaction menu everyone knows that this is your quick play action on foot. So basically, the action, whether it's like you salute, you uh, you know make it rain with the money. This is on foot. So when you're on foot, just walking around, this is what it is. I have mine set to salute because I always salute my crew members out of respect, and uh, that's how I have mine. But you can change that to the interaction menu. You can also do it right here. Quick play action. This is for your vehicles. So uh, basically, if you look at the bottom left side right there, it says select the quick play action you will play when using a vehicle. So for races, things like that, or whatever, that's what that is. Now you have a joint celebration. So there's a lot of uh, like adversary modes or death matches or whatever, you know, the arena war stuff where you're, you'll are you have people with you, a team thing, and the joint celebration that you have is, you know, what you do with the other person that's on your team. And I have mine set to handshake. It's just random or whatever. So you can go, you know, fist bump, or whatever, bro hug. It doesn't matter. I just have mine set to uh, handshake. Then we have player mood. And this is when you're basically, you know, on foot. Mine is set to normal. Again, you can uh, adjust all this in the interaction menu, but it's also right here. For the race, if you're actually in a race or whatever, when you're waiting in line, uh, or you, when you're, uh, you know, getting ready to actually start the race and you can see all the different players, uh, it's set to, I have mine set to anger, I don't know why, it's whatever. Uh, player mood for a death match, aiming as well, is how I have that one set. So that's pretty cool. This is join next mode from spectator bots. Uh, I believe this is with the arena wars. This is pretty much what I'm, you know, kind of leaning towards here. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So when you have a spec, oh god, dang it, we're doing it live, baby. When you're in the spectator box after you die or something, you can go and join to the next available, you know, whatever it is, uh, whatever mode is going on. So you can do join or jo don't join. I have mine set to join, obviously. Uh, allow spectators. So I have this turned off. Basically, if you're in a mission or a death match, or you're doing something, if you have this on, you will allow people to spectate you so they can see what you're doing, and then it, they can jump into the next game that you're in. Now, I find that this kind of messes with my quality of gameplay. The lag kind of picks up a little bit when somebody else is... It may just be a placebo effect. I just keep mine off, though. Uh, that you know, If I want somebody in my uh, game, I'll invite them in. Matchmaking. Same kind of concept right here. If you look at the bottom left corner, it says determines whether a player can use a quick job to join a job which you are hosting. So once again, if I want somebody in there, I'm going to invite them. So I have that set to close so people just can't randomly, um, you know, spawn and, and, and jump in your game or whatever. Spawn location. This is important right here. Uh, I have this set to last location. This is great because if you uh, like to lobby hop to find a solo public lobby like myself, I have mine set to last location and I just stay outside. So if you are not in a building, the game will load in way quicker. I mean, it sheds several minutes off. But you can go to a random location, whatever your um, actual, lo you know, like uh, properties are. My apartment, you know, Alta Street, Del Perro, Alta, Eclipse Towers. 
you know, the garage, you know, so you have a whole bunch of different areas that you can, you know, your, your uh, yacht right here that you can spawn into. But again, if you spawn into a location, it takes longer to load into the game. I know a lot of people do that. They always load into their, you know, their CEO office or whatever, this or that. And it allows you to do that and be able to get in there, your nightclub, whatever. But I just keep mine on last location. So if I'm in a building, it'll, I'll spawn back in that building. Uh, a particular location, but a lot of times I just stand outside so I can switch through my lobbies much quicker. That's a better, much better way to do that right there. So you can select the source of your rank title across GT Online. Um, I have mine set to default, right? Very easy. Uh, betting odds format. Uh, this is when you're in a race, it'll say like if it's fractional, right? It'll say like, um, you know, you have a three to one odds, right? two to five or five to two two to five whatever that's the fractional you have your decimal then you have the money line that you can switch it to most people have theirs on uh fractional that's just the common you know betting format for pretty much everything two to one odds three to one odds five to one ten to one right that's what that is you have the kill yourself option right there it costs 500 bucks as you know that's what, what it costs this is the player overhead display so this is what you do when you select your player overhead display preference seen when targeting another player so I like to see the other players name and crew tag if you want to keep it minimal right you can go to a marker only or you can set it to none where you don't see anything right you just see the actual players uh, character uh, you can have it set to just their name but again I like to see the name and the crew tag to get more information on the actual person all right uh, this right here I use I keep this on this is remain host after next job vote screen so I keep this on because if I'm hosting like a mission, I want to keep, you know, being the host, so I can keep the settings correct. This is why I keep that on. So, but remember though, this only works if you start out as the host and every now and again, it'll glitch out and it won't let you be the host. But for the most part, that works right there. Filter quick job content. So if you want to join a quick job through your phone or whatever, the content, you can actually filter that out. You can put it on any rockstar created. You can set it to, you know, user created only or whatever. I keep mine on any. Probably should keep it on Rockstar created so you get proper matches and things like that. Uh, you're not getting spawned into somebody's trash job, which is just, you know, whatever. Uh, one on one uh, deathmatch time. <laughs> Who, I mean, nobody ever uses this anymore. Uh, but you can set it to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45, whatever, 30, 45 minutes. There you go. So I just leave mine on 5. That's, that, that's the traditional amount of time what everybody uses for that if you decide to go to a 1v1. Let's go over here to settings, all right? And this is where a lot of it comes into play right here. This is a, a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go over a few things, how I have mine set up and show you some recommendations and things like that. So let's get into it. First off, you have controls, extremely important. But this also dictates, um, or it's dictated by your play style, right? So we click on controls. And it's saying show controls for in vehicle third person. So I'm looking at my particular controls when I'm in vehicle third person, if I'm in an aircraft third person, if I'm on foot first person, it shows you what you actually have. Okay, this is what it is. In vehicle first person, blah, 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 right? In aircraft first person, in creator mode, whatever, right? My targeting mode, I'm assisted aim partial. It's not full uh, assisted aim. Uh, it's not free aim, it's in between, because I, I play both modes, right? I'm a money grinder, so I'm not trying to fight with NPCs that have laser accurate, you know, targeting. I'm not, I'm not trying to fool with that. But if I do mix it up with somebody, I like to have the freedom of uh, being able to swap around and move a little bit easier. So I use assisted aim partial, not full assisted aim, not free aim. It's in between. That's just my gameplay. It's, it's different for everybody, right? Don't let nobody tell you one way is better than the other. You're not a bigger badass. If you, you know, it's just don't listen to that crap. All right. Play however you like to play the game. That's fine. So I turn my vibration off. Now this does kind of, um, you know, for uh, certain game modes, your controller will vibrate if like, an enemy gets close to you, especially like in, uh, what is it, Slasher? Yeah. Uh, but I turn mine off to, to save my controller battery life. That's why I have it turned off. And, you know, I mean, for most part, I'm not, you know, in those adversary modes. So I don't have to worry about that. So I keep mine off. 
but you could, if you want it on, whatever. But I, I do feel like my controller will last a little bit longer if it's the battery is not getting eaten up because you know the, every time an explosion goes off, my controller vibrates and it's really annoying. You know what I mean? There's explosions everywhere, so I leave mine off. I like to have a, a minimal, comfortable, you know, kind of feel to it. Invert look is off. I keep that off because that you know it messes up your controls big time. Uh, so here are my actual controls that I use right here for third person, first person. Uh, for third person, I you know keep it. The, I recommend keeping it the same. Okay, swapping in and out again. That may be your style, but I feel like that just kind of confuses and takes away from the experience of the game. So I keep mine the same. Uh, alternate and what alternate does. This is the the difference right here. Standard and alternate. Uh, standard is what it is. You know, default. I switch mine to alternate. The biggest difference, really the only difference, is it switches your fire button. See, I'm a first-person shooter when it comes with, like, a Battlefield and things like that. I definitely prefer my fire button to be R1. That's what alternate it is. Standard, your fire button is R2, the trigger. Or it'll be, you know, right trigger for Xbox uh, or right bumper, right? I don't like the trigger. There's too much lag. There's too much, you know, you can't get precise shots off. Um, I like alternate way better. And this is because, again, I'm a big, uh, I've, I've played first-person shooters, particularly Battlefield, all my life. I am world-ranked on Battlefield Modern Combat uh, for the PlayStation 2. You know, I'm like, <laughs> so I, I took that serious, right? So I like to have my fire uh, weapon R1 and target lock on L1. It's just much more responsible, or excuse me, <laughs> much more responsive. All right, my weapon wheel is L2 versus R1, or L1, excuse me. So you, and you can kind of fool around this if you want. See, as you see how I switch right here, standard fire weapon is R2 and target lock or and aim lock is L2. And I just don't like that. It doesn't, it's just not, it doesn't feel right to me. So I always, every time I play a first person shooter, I always find the option to switch uh, and make shooting uh, my R1 and like my zooming L1 much more responsive. I recommend giving it a try. I think it'll it'll do good for you now This is something to take into consideration uh, a lot of PvP players. They will use um, What is it? Let me find it real quick Standard uh, and uh, they will use standard FPS 2 and alternate FPS 2 all right, and if you guys pay attention and uh, the most recent Red Dead update, they added this into the game. They added uh, alternate FPS 2 and standard FPS 2 into the game. Now, I'm not a, uh, a big PvP player on, on GTA, right? I'm not, a, I'm not a try hard. I'm not a griever or whatever. But a lot of those types of players use this control type right here. So you fire the weapon with R1, right? And you... It's weird. You sprint with R2. What this allows you to do is it allows you, because most times, uh, for example, if I go to alternate, my uh, for first person control type, my sprinting is going to be X, right? You, you, you tap X to run. So if you keep alternate FPS 2, your sprinting is R2, it allows you to keep your thumbs on the controls so you can, you know, aim and, and move around and swivel. So it gives you a little bit greater freedom of movement if you're going to be engaging, basically what this allows you to do, it allows you to quickly strafe left and right in third person mode. So if you guys know, uh, if you're if you're gunfighting in GT Online, for a standard or a default, if you hold X, your player will move faster. But now you can't have your right thumb on the joystick to turn your aiming, uh, you know, to, to aim left and right. So this mode right here allows you to sprint, fire weapon, lock on, uh, and have your thumbs on the joystick to look up, down, right, left, strafe, left and right at the higher speed. That's why they do that. A lot of free aim players do that. Um, a lot of uh, you know PvP players will use this method. It's super weird to me. Again, I don't take PvP on GTA serious at all. There's too many glitches and you know God mode trash. So it's irrelevant, right? I played the game how I've always played it. So I keep mine on alternate. So the only thing I really do is just switch the fire weapon but if you as you see right here on alternate fps2 your fire weapon is r1 it trust me it is better it's much more responsive if you play call of duty stuff like that uh you know battlefield i recommend you swapping those over and take a look at that and see how it feels but a lot of the uh, tryhards will go um uh, and your free aim players will use alternate fps2 but again just find out your own thing you know go through all these and check it out so i keep mine on alternate uh first person and third person 
So third person aiming sensitivity. Uh, I, I don't mess with this too much. I turn mine up just a notch on both sides, right? First person, uh, third person look around. I like to have that. I don't like it to be too quick because you can't uh, precisely aim. I don't like it to be too slow because you can't quickly swing from left to right up to down. So I just turn mine up a notch. That way I still it's a little bit faster when I turn around and swing my weapon around. But I still get those pinpoint accurate aiming. Uh, you know, when I'm aiming down scope or if I'm, you know, not aim not using a scope but still looking down the actual rifle. All right. Uh, third person. So you just have basically you have uh, third person aiming sensitivity, first person look around sensitivity, first person aiming sensitivity, third person. Uh, look around aiming sensitivity, right? So you have the for each one first and third person. So I just turn those up one notch This is important right here the dead zone. All right turn your dead zone all the way down Okay, this will help you closely mimic a true first-person shooter. It eliminates any kind of lag It's just a split second and you barely notice it, but it does uh, add a little bit of a delay to your your ability to you know look down are to uh, have the first person and first person dead zone ability. So you, you want to take that down, turn that all the way off, and you want to crank up your third person and first person aim look acceleration. All right. So just mimic that right there. Turn these up about one notch, maybe two uh, max. Take your dead zone all the way down, and then jack up your look acceleration for third person and first person all the way up. Okay. Definitely check that out. Allow movement when zoomed. You have to do that. Yeah. Uh, this is big for, you know, for example, if you had this turned off, you couldn't sniper dance, right? So when you are zoomed in, it lets you move, uh, you know, strafe left and right, things like that. So I keep that on, definitely. Uh, switch handbrake with duck and hydraulics. Leave that off. That gets kind of confusing, right? Because, you know, it, it, it'll mess up your control scheme. I, just, I leave mine off. We all know what the hydraulic is. You just, you know... Uh, it's a combination of matching your joysticks and tapping X or whatever. So there you go for that. Now, drive-by control type. When you're doing drive-bys, I used to just use a fire, but I, now I switched it to aim plus fire. This is much better. It allows you to aim before you shoot. So if you want to get a precise pin pot or pin, <laughs> god dang, if it's a precise pinpoint precision dead aim, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It allows you to aim much better and you don't have to waste ammo. Uh, and it, it is, it's a little bit easier to, to, to control, in my opinion. I can hold down the aim button. I can see my aim reticle. I can position the aiming reticle over my particular target, and then I can take the shots as I want. So, again, play around with it, see how you like it. If you go just fire, then you just hit R1 and you start shooting. You, know, right, you, you don't even really aim. You just start shooting, okay? You can still aim, uh, but you, there, you, you can't separate the two. It just immediately starts shooting. So I like to have mine aim plus fire. I recommend that. Light bar effects. Again, I turn that off. If you notice, if you have cops after you, your light bar is like red and blue, red and blue, right? I, get, I like to have this minimal. I just keep it off. That way it helps save battery. In my PlayStation, in my actual console, I turn the brightness all the way down as well. Again, to save battery life. And even if it's just like 5%, that's still something I recommend doing. It helps out a little bit there, so... Yeah, uh, and then of course if you get confused and it's all messed up, you can always go to restore defaults and come right on back, right? So that's that right there. All right, so let's back out of this real quick, and we're gonna go down to audio. All right, so audio is important because uh, if you you know you do certain things, you don't want to get bugged by people and things like that. So my SFX volume, just the regular game sound, I have that. I left that default. I turn my music volume all the way down. I just don't want to get you know annoyed by it. after you've played this game for you know so many years. The, it just kind of gets a little annoying. Um, dialogue boost, I've got that turned all the way off as well. Radio station doesn't really matter. Uh, now, if there is a voice chat, you know this because I don't I don't listen to the radio anymore. This doesn't really matter. But uh, what this means is that you, if you're talking to somebody, right, or if like. Uh, the game is talking to you. It's one of the two, basically. You can make it to where the radio volume will fade out, right? So that kind of is that. I remember back in the day when I did jam to the radio, that would get really annoying. The radio would be going up and down, up and down with the volume. So I just left it to where it retains the radio volume. Um, so when you're, you know, communicating, it doesn't kind of mess with your head a little bit there. So uh, output I have to to TV, but I use headphones. So you can switch it to headphones right here. Again, I don't really fool with that. I just plug in my headphones and my controller 
So if you get confused, you can just restore to default and go back. All right. Next is camera angle. Let me uh, let, let me uh, adjust something real quick so I can show you this. Right. So here we go. Here's my here's my car, and I'm, I'm going to show you something real quick. Here. This is important. A lot of people don't know about this, and it really does make a big difference. So let's go to camera. Allow independent camera modes. I keep that off. Okay. Uh, because it, it messes with you when you're you know moving around the game and stuff like that. Just I recommend just keep it off. Vehicle camera height. This is critical. I believe it is default to low. And when it's set to low, you see how it moves, right? When it's set to low, you can't really see anything above you. Switch this to high. It is much easier to navigate and drive around. You can see what's in front of you. It is so much easier, okay? I believe it's default on low. You're just lower to the ground, and I, I, it's just a pain in the ass. Put that on high. It's much better. If you go uh, underneath, like, low bridges or whatever, the camera will adjust automatically for you, and you don't even really notice it. It's great. So set that to high. Much better, okay? First-person auto-level camera. Uh, basically, when I'm in first-person, the camera will... If I look down, it doesn't stay that way. If I keep this on on, it will automatically level out. So if I look down at my shoes and I let the controls go, it'll automatically raise my head back up to where I'm looking. So keep that on. It, it be, trust me, it's annoying if you don't. So again, though, it's all to everyone's preferences, but this is just the general what I would recommend, okay? First person on foot field of view. So a lot of people, like in first person games in Fortnite, you know, Battlefield, they like to crank this up. And it gives you like that weird um, fisheye kind of look. I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like that. I just keep mine default. I think it's fine the way it is. Um, so, yeah. First person ragdoll. I keep this on because, what? Uh, well, you know, this is, again, a preference thing. But if I'm in first person and say I get hit by a car, I actually, my camera will rag, it'll, it'll, it'll move around with my body that's being ragdolled. If I turn this off, if I get hit by a car, it takes me out of first person into third person and you can see your body and then when your guy your character stands up it zooms you back into first person so it, it kind of is a little weird it kind of slows you down i just keep it the way it is same with first person combat role if i'm in first person and i roll i stay in first person if i have this off when i combat roll it zooms me out of first person and then back into first person when i am you know standing normally so just to uh, you know eliminate any kind of confusion and you know slowing this because honestly if you're doing a combat role you're probably in some kind of pvp or some kind of pve situation so you don't want the camera you know switching back and forth on you right first person head bobbing i have that on uh, i leave that on just kind of for the realism it, it seems smoother if you have that off your camera gets kind of weird and you know wobbly or whatever it just doesn't i don't know it's kind of weird i leave that on though it just it just now this is something that you could turn off and it wouldn't be that big of a deal uh but yeah, I just like to keep that on because it doesn't mess up my camera and it just seems more natural. Like in all first person games, when you run, your kind of your camera kind of shakes a little bit as you would in real life. So I just leave it the way it is. Uh, first person, third person cover. I have this off. Okay. When I'm in, uh, say if I'm in first person and I take cover, I want it to stay in first person. If I have this on and I'm in first person and I go to like cover behind a wall, it'll zoom me out. Of first person okay so I leave that the way it is uh, I, 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 I take that off that way I can you know I, I keep my situation set and I don't have to worry about the camera switching again okay so again if I'm in first person and I, I have this setting on when I go to take cover it zooms me out and puts me in third person and when I get out of cover it puts me back into first so I don't like that zooming in and out of the camera I turn this off so whatever I'm in if I'm in first person or third person I'm good to go uh, first person vehicle auto center. I strongly recommend you have this on. Okay, if you are in first person and you look to the left, your camera will stay there until you move it back. So I turn this on that way when I look to the left and I let my joystick go, the camera automatically focuses back center. That's really important so you're not crashing everywhere much better. Now, first person hood vehicle. A lot of people, uh, for example, like uh, your ghillies and things like that, they'll use first person hood. They'll turn that on because when you go to first person, what this does, and I'll show you real quick here. All right, so I am uh, I have it off. So when I go to first person, I see uh, my actual, you know, I see this right. I see everything that's going on, right? I have, uh, you know, I can see the interior of the car. 
all that good stuff. And so if I'm looking left and I have that one feature on, when I start to drive, my camera automatically goes forward for me. That's, that's why I leave it on. Anyways, uh, but uh, yeah, so this is my first person view. I like to be able to see the interiors. I'm not a big, once again, I'm not a big PvP guy in GTA. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's, it's ridiculous. But if you have this feature on, let's go back to your settings. All right, let's go back to camera. If you have the, where is it at here? Um, first person uh, vehicle. If you go to on, right, we'll set that on. I back out and I go to first person. Now it shows from the hood of my car. Now you can get some cool like, you know, camera pictures and things like that. You can swap it out. Um, but it just shows you from the, now if I'm in like a jet, if I'm in a, um, like a helicopter, it's much easier to aim in first, first person. A lot of, a lot of, uh, like pilots and PVP, you know, aerial PVP players, they use this feature right here. Right, so by all means, it's it's cool. I used to use this a lot actually, uh, but I liked to start seeing the interior of the actual vehicle. So that's why I went back to uh, you know turning the hood view off. Right, and all you see is a little dot. If you're like in a if you're in a buzzard or a jet, you just see your reticle. Right, you know you don't see the actual cockpit, and it's much easier to aim. So if you're a uh, aerial attacker or whatever, that's the uh, the option a lot of people use. Okay, so. Let's go back into um, settings here. Let's go back to camera. Ha 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 Turn that back off. See on off. That's what it does for you right there. All right. Uh, first by or first person drive by camera relative to vehicle. Again, I leave this on. That way your camera's not getting all messed up. It's just much easier, much simpler that way. Um, it's just you know a good way to have it all around. Again, if you get confused and you want to restart it, restore to default simple right okay so we're on display now and uh, this is basically is what you see on your screen so I have my radar on uh, if you want to take some cool pictures and you don't want your radar on you just turn it to off now blips you just see the dots on the radar I don't like that because I, I like to be able to see the structures of the map the buildings and the roads and things like that so I just leave mine to uh, you know on the HUD I leave that on it just you know it's a heads-up display that just helps out keep that I mean, once again it's preference you can do with that what you want weapon target I leave my weapon target on simple all right simple is just you it's basically the dot uh, you can put it on complex which is the crosshairs right and simple is a dot it's easier for me to get pinpoint shots with the uh, reticle set to simple because of this right here you can actually set your reticle size uh, which is nice so I can I, I, I turn mine down I make my uh, actual targeting dot a little bit smaller it's easier to get headshots that way uh, I just prefer that you know a lot of uh, I used to use the complex because it, re it resembles like a first-person shooter type kind of thing right and, and you know what let me just show you so hold on so this is simple right here right I'll go to a, you know pick my gun out and I aim you see the white dot right you see that that's the simple it's just easier to get you know those headshots in my opinion again it's different for everybody, you know. I can just kind of pinpoint, you know, the headshot right there. It's easier, and take shot. All right, now if I go to go back to settings, go back to display. If I turn it to complex, now it gives me like the crosshairs, and that's okay. That's fine. A lot of free aim players use that, you know, for strafing back and forth, and you got the crosshair. I just feel like it's just not as pinpoint accurate. Uh, that's my opinion. Though. You know what I mean? Is this now for some people they may like that you've got the leading. You know what I mean? Uh, you can lead from the side hashes or whatever, but that's just my. I like the simple better. It's just that it's all. This is a simple dot. That's it. Instead of the complex, right? So we'll go back to this, and then again you can make it larger or smaller with the reticle size. I turn mine almost all the way down. I like a, a little bit smaller so it's easier to get those pinpoint shots. Okay. Uh, GPS route, I leave it on. That way I can see where I'm going because, you know, I'm forever a noob. Uh, I love that I use my GPS. Expanded radar, I have that turned off because it does eat up a lot of screen, right? So if it's off, this is my radar if you look at the bottom left corner. Now, I can I can make it. I can expand it. I can make it larger, right? Simple, right? You know, and over time, it'll just kind of go back down to the regular size. Uh, but if you go to settings, you go to display again. You can turn that on. And now it's the larger radar. Some people like that. 
but I find it's not very good in in regard to relation of where you are distance wise, as you see. So if they're right here around this corner, it's much easier to see their term or their their uh, relation and their distance to me. It's much easier that way, right? That's why I have mine. So we go back to settings, go back into display. Okay, uh, player overhead display. I have mine turned off. You can turn it on. It's whatever you want, though. Safe zone size is your. It's a screen setting, so you can adjust the. Um, say your radar is getting cut off by the back, the bottom corner of your screen. You can adjust your safe zone size to basically you know, allow your screen to fit properly on your TV or your monitor. That's what that is right there. So now we're at the in-game in-game depth of field. Uh, basically, I leave that on, not off. That allows you to get the. It's a better perspective when you're zooming in and things like that. It's just, it, it's easier for me. Once again, this is something you want to play around with and see your own, uh, you know, perspective and your own uh, personal settings for that. But I like my depth of field uh, to be. I like that turned on, so everything is rela in relation to what I'm doing. It is kind of. It's just, it's just smoother, right? Uh, screen kill effects. I leave that on. Obviously, I want to have that on. Uh, subtitles, I turn those off. I mean, I really don't need the subtitles on. For other people, that may be an issue for them. You know, hearing impa impaired or English is not a first language or whatever. So that's just totally up to you. So here we have the measurement system. Uh, basically, you have two options. You have Imperial, which is what the United States uses. It's in terms of miles, yards, and feet. And then you have the metric system, which is in regard to meters, kilometers, uh, centimeters, things like that. So that's how they use theirs. Uh, most of uh, the country uses the metric system. United States uses the imperial system. I'm from the United States, so I use imperial. And that just lets you know, like if you're driving, it says you've got 1.8 miles, right? If you're using the metric system, you've got two kilometers or whatever, right? So that's what that means right there. That's the difference, all right? And again, if you get confused, restore the defaults and start over. No big deal. Notifications is the next one. This, a lot of people don't understand. They don't get this. And I want to make a video uh, a little bit later on talking about this a bit more in depth. But this is basically, um, <laughs> this helps you out a lot. So for notifications, um, I have my phone alerts on, right? I want to get phone alerts for certain things like special crates, whatever. But you can turn this off. You can turn your phone alerts off. And that definitely helps out from getting annoyed. Stats alerts, I have that turned off. I don't need to be seeing everybody's stats. Now, I am a crew leader of the old school gamers, so I do want to see crew updates, thing that's going on. I have that on, but you can turn that off if you're in a crew. Uh, you don't want to be seeing a bunch of stuff. Friend updates, I care about my friends. I want to see how they're doing in the game. I have that on, but you can turn that off. Social club stuff, uh, once again, I'm a crew leader, so I need to see what's going on. I have that on. No, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, PlayStation Store, whatever. I mean, I probably should just turn that off. But I have that on. I have it on for a reason. So, but again, you can kind of fool around with that. Tool tips, right? I leave that on. I, I don't know what it is. For every game I play, I always leave the tool tips on. Like when you get into a car or, for example, if you want to drop ammo on the weapon wheel, it tells you like triangle or circle or whatever. You get tool tips. I'm just, once again, forever a noob. I just always leave that on. It's just, I don't know why. I, it's just security blanket, I guess. This is a big one right here. Your message frequency if you are tired about getting all these messages all the time turn that to one hour this really helps out as you see you can get you know you can have it no delay one minute two minute three minute four five blah, blah, blah. put it on one hour and that really helps out this in a combination with the other things dramatically reduces the amount of phone calls that you get the amount of like in-game pop-ups i'd say 90% of players don't know about a few of these things. I'm going to make a video about this later to help out with this. Uh, but yeah, so turn your message frequency to one hour, and that really helps out. Okay, so uh, we can back out of that. And then Rockstar Editor, we can skip that. Um, then we'll do saving and startup. Okay, this is pretty cool right here. So definitely help you out. I load into GTA Online. I don't really play um, story mode that much anymore. Every now and again, I'll jump on there. But you can switch it to load into story mode or load into GTA Online. Now, on the loading screen, when you load in, you can actually select, you know, if you want to go into GTA Online or story mode. So, you know, once again, it's just preference. Don't worry about that. All right. Uh, motion sensor function. I have all those turned off. 
because uh, I don't use the motion sen sensor on my controller. That would just be totally crazy weird, right? So, uh, but that's it, man. That's top 25 settings, options, tips, tricks, guide, all that stuff right there. So again, you know, my settings won't work for everybody, but they work for me. And I think that, you know, a lot of these can work for a lot of you. Hopefully I introduced you to a few options and features that might help out and improve your gameplay and quality of life and just having a good time on the game. Uh, so there's still to this day, I mean, thousands of new players coming into GTA five online. So, and in going forward with the other games coming out, uh, hopefully this will help you kind of, uh, cause a lot of people see the settings like, Oh my God, there's so much, what does this mean? What does that mean? This and that. And they just kind of like are a little intimidated by it. So they don't even fool with it. Right. So that's you know, kind of what this video is all about to kind of show you, give you an idea. Uh, I do have a video talking about the interaction menu tips and tricks on that. Uh, I will, I will, I'll, I'll try and link that. If I can find that video, I'll link that for you in the description down below. So please check that video out as well. Uh, and again, I really hope this helps out. Let me know if you guys got any tips or tricks in the comments down below. Let me guys know if you got any questions at all. I'll definitely help out with that uh, and try and get you guys the best setup or whatever that you can. And, you know, just enjoy it and have a good time with it. I really do appreciate all your guys' support. We are so close to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, as of this video right now, let me check here. We're doing this live. As of this video, we are sitting on 95 thousand two hundred and sixteen subscribers we're very close guys thank you so much for all your support if you've been enjoying my content and you've just forgotten to subscribe please check that man show your support subscribe to my channel share my videos spread the word the illest and realest in the game man so i really do appreciate that thank you so much okay so here's the outro all right here we go <laughs> all right thank you guys so much for checking out one of my videos make sure you subscribe to my channel for the illest and realest content the game make sure you smash i mean smash smash that like button and you guys stay dangerous all right we'll see you in the next one peace out yeah